going to knit my first sweater on the machine. <laughs> so I have a knitting machine. It is a Bond knitting machine. Bond. James Bond. It is very, very simple. There is no yarn tension thing. There is no row counter. I only have 100 needles. I should need 102 needles um, for my size sweater, but I'm just gonna try with 100 and, <laughs> and just hope for the best. I watched the instruction video again for setting up the knitting machine. You have to hear this, this music. very retro so i'm gonna start hopefully we'll have a sweater sometime soon here you can see me casting on for the sweater now the first couple rows are really the most difficult rows in my opinion um, because you know you're setting up your machine uh, my machine comes with this complicated cast on thing which i won't get into but um you don't have any weights on your work yet so you have to be really careful that the yarn doesn't get stuck in the needles and again my machine is very simple it's, it's not very sophisticated so i feel like the, the needles get stuck a bit more quickly with this machine and you have to push the carriage quite hard to get it to the other side here you can see me um, working with the actual yarn that I'm going to use for the sweater. I was using some scrap yarn to cast on previously. You can see that I'm holding it up quite high. Um, that's just to help with the tension. I'm uh, using my phone tripod um, to, <laughs> to help with the yarn tension. It's, it's, very, it's very much a MacGyver situation, but it works. So. <laughs> And what you can see here, just barely, is that I'm casting off the back neck stitches. This is the finished, or almost finished, back piece. I finished the back! <laughs> that looks like a blob, a translucent blob. My swatch was also like this, just horribly stretched out. Just because, you know, the machines, the needles are further apart than if the stitches would just be on your one hand knitting needle. And of course there's weights on it. My swatch was like this as well before I blocked it, so I have faith. <laughs> you can see it curls like mad. Machine knitting does that. I've heard it's because it's more even than if you would uh, knit by hand. So yeah, but this is the back. I've uh, bound it off the way the pattern is set. Uh, there's really no way of showing you this because everything curls like mad. So the neckline is here, this is the back of the neck, and then this is the back of the shoulders on waist yarn right now for when I need to attach it to the front. And I'm knitting the front right now. <laughs> This is uh, insane. I've knit the back of the sweater in a couple hours. This is insane. <laughs> okay, so I'm working on the front here and I am starting the v-neck now and you can see me working with the transfer tool. That's that red tool I'm using. And with the transfer tool, I take one stitch over to its neighbor uh, kind of doing a knit two together or slip slip knit or something like that and then going over it with a carriage uh, knitting one row and then knitting the second row uh, so that I'm back at the neckline and then doing another decrease and at first I thought about just speeding this up um, but I think actually it's really valuable to for you to see it in real time and but, and obviously, I am not 
a professional on the knitting machine. It can go much faster than this. But I always had this misconception of a knitting machine just being so much faster than hand knitting. But um, yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. Decreasing is so difficult. And you also need to keep an eye on your weights, making sure that they're not too far down because otherwise they're not pulling enough on your work and it can actually cause drop stitches, which I had a lot in my sweater. <laughs> And they're much more difficult to fix since you're always looking at the pearl side. <laughs> okay, and this is me wanting to show you a cool trick, <laughs> uh, which is that, you know, I'm just about to bind off the, uh, the shoulders. You can see I've already made the v-neck. Uh, neckline here and if you don't have any yarn in your carriage then it will drop off the machine which is much easier than pulling the work off your machine what I'm showing you here is how I'm putting shoulder stitches on the machine so I bound off the shoulders with some waste yarn and now I am picking up just the the very last stitch of the you know the actual sweater yarn and I'm putting that stitch on the needle and say this is the the right shoulder of the back piece and then I'm taking the right shoulder of the front piece and putting all of the stitches of that on the needles as well and even though I could do this by hand probably I could do it much quicker by hand, uh, but um, the instruction video for this sweater actually included this and I, I wanted to, to see um, how it looked if I actually did all of these things on the machine, which is something new for me. Uh, and also I thought it would be fun to try. And here you can see I have both shoulders seamed and I'm just trying on the sweater to be and the v-neck looks quite nice uh, you can see the, the hems are still rolling over uh, and, and the sides as well you know every <laughs> every edge is still rolling over but yeah I was really excited to see this and curious for the next step And similarly to how I put the shoulder stitches on the needles, um, I then put the side stitches, well also also kind of the shoulder stitches, uh, on the needle uh, so that I could knit the sleeve seamlessly from there, which is just seemed really fun to me. Uh, so I'm knitting the sleeve flat and then seaming it afterwards. And here I am working with the transfer tool again uh, because for the sleeve I need to do quite a few decreases. Um, and so every few rows uh, I'm doing some decreases on either side. And uh, it's still <laughs> it's still very difficult, but I'm already getting better at it. And um, yeah, it's just a really fun process. And here we go, trying on the sweater. Uh, with I can't tell if it's just one sleeve or two sleeves. No, I've just completed one sleeve um, <laughs> And again the edge is rolling over And that is sleeve number two done <laughs> And it's very weird to see the sweater just like this um, But with a bit of seaming it'll soon be an actual sweater and after lots of hours of seaming and knitting the ribbing everywhere, um, I have a finished sweater. And here I'm just showing you the sweater before I block it. And you can see that, um, you know, the, the armhole edges are still quite bulky. So I'm kind of hoping that that will sort itself out while blocking. We will see. Now I just need to 
snip the ends off. I mean, weave the ends in and then snip, snip them off. And let me show you the difference between what the yarn looks like right off the uh, right off the cone and what it looks like after washing. You see that it's uh, plumper after washing, and that's most likely because some spinning oil has been added to the uh, to the yarn on the cone to make it run it through the machine smoother and that just washes out giving you the actual yarn much softer and much less uh, and much plumper which makes it less translucent as we uh, as it looked before <laughs> It fits! I've got a blouse with a bow on underneath, so it looks a bit weird. Um, but yes, it fits! And I'm so happy with the neckline. I'm happy that I redid it because it looks much better like that. And an interesting thing to note about the neckline is that with the ribbing in place, you know, the actual v-neck of the sweater ends here but without the ribbing in place it was almost dropping off my shoulders so um, adding the ribbing just really pulled it in and also I think yeah because it pulled it in it made the sleeves just a bit shorter uh, which is fine for me um, but they're fitting very snug right now, which I really like because if there's one thing I hate, it's walking outside and uh, the wind just going up my sleeve, you know? So, so this is great, but I think that for another one that I would make it a little bit larger. Um, oh, but it fits so good! Yeah, you can see the decreases here. So this is all seamed. I'm not sure if I filmed that part. Uh, after I knit all of the pieces, uh, you then do one large seam here. And I found that very, it's very much like sewing. Um, like how you construct um, a garment when sewing. You do the back and the front, you join them at the shoulders, then you attach the sleeves and then you do this seam. That's, you know, it's the exact same order of construction, whereas with hand knitting doesn't usually... I always um, do the side seams and the shoulders first and then cast on the sleeves in the round and then knit that in the round but okay so i found that interesting um but yeah and washing the yarn has really made it plump up uh, it is no longer translucent thank god um and i think it just looks really good 
Um, it is a drop shoulder, which uh, does give some bulk here. Um, so I might try to do a set and sleeve next time, or uh, or I do it, you know, in a looser gauge or with a thinner yarn so that it kind of drapes more and it's not so noticeable that you have a lot of bulk here. Um, yeah, I have I already have tons of ideas for the next one. Um, I wanted to show you. Yeah. Okay, so let me show you the seam. So this is the first s sleeve that I did. And you might be able to tell that this is not super neat. Uh, that has to do with me learning how to put things on the knitting machine. And with this one, I paid a lot more attention and you can see it is more of a straighter line. And that has to do with um, how I put these stitches on the machine um, because that's, that's where the new stitches are picked up. So I thought that was really interesting. Oh, and for the V-neck, I had two center stitches. That was just how, um, you know, because here you have two center stitches. So I felt like I couldn't just pick up one there. So I did two. Um, and then I did a decrease on either side every other row. And for this one and this side, I picked up three stitches for every four stitches that are there. And for the back, I just picked up every stitch. Um, I also did some decreasing on the first row of the uh, ribbing for the sleeves, which you probably didn't need to do since they're so tight. But yeah, I decreased to 34 stitches here. So yeah, I was very happy with how this turned out. Really excited to do more. And yeah, I hope this video was fun to watch. And if you have any questions, put them down below. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.